Okay. Well, and then by age 11, you actually put together your first group, the Five Chimes. Yes. Okay. And with your childhood friend, uh, Ronald White and Pete Moore. Yes. So that was the first time you actually were singing in a group? No, it wasn't the first time I ever sang in a group. We had a group in elementary school, but it wasn't anything. It was just, mm. you know, four guys, we'd get together and just sing sometimes. But it wasn't like when I started the chimes or when we started the chimes. Uh, we were serious about it then, you know. There were groups everywhere in our neighborhood, and uh, we wanted to compete with them. So we started our group, and uh, Ron and, and, and Pete and I. And uh, we had two other guys singing with us, a guy named James and a guy named uh, Clarence. And eventually they quit, you know, before we started the Matadors and evolved that into the Miracles and all that. Uh, they had quit. But, uh, yeah, we started when I was 11. We were singing in elementary school. And we, we used to love to sing and sing because that attracted the girls. Right. The girls came to hear us. You know? <laughs> so that, that, was, that was motivation. Was it, you know, were there other kids in your school who had green eyes or are you kind of unique? In that respect, I don't remember anyone who had green eyes other than, other than me um, at that point. No, okay. I wasn't paying attention, but I don't remember anyone. I'm sure that kind of stood out to the girls and everything else like that. Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, in 1952, you were 12. That's when you met Diana Ross. Yeah, and she lived four doors down. Four doors down the street from me. Okay, and she was a little bit younger than you. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And was she singing back then? Um, not when I met her. I didn't even know she could sing. Mm -hmm. yeah, when I found out she could sing was when she moved away from the, from the block. She moved to a place called the Brewster Projects. And after we started Motown, she called me one day and she said, Hey, Smoke, I got this group, you know, and uh, I want you to hear us so you can sign us up in Motown. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so I said, okay, I didn't know she was a singer till then. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Well, she wrote a book at one point, and she said the two of you actually were dating at one point. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did that last a long time, or was that just sort of brief? And well, it lasted uh, probably longer than it should, because I was married at the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so this happened later. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. that happened later. Okay. That happened after I got married, uh, you know, after I got them signed up in Motown and all that. That's when uh -huh. that started. Okay. Um, well, when you were 14, this was 1954... Uh, Aretha Franklin actually had her first baby. She was 12 years old at the time. Mm -hmm. Were you guys still close during this time? We've been close all of our lives since okay. we first met. Yeah, we, yeah, we were close. H how did she really react to that, being so young to, to have a child? Well, of course, being as young as she was, uh, to be pregnant. When she found out she was pregnant, she panicked. Yeah. Of course, you know, because, uh, you know, 12, come on now. So she panicked and uh, she was highly upset about that. But, you know, there it was. Yeah. And so there was nothing she could do at that point. Right. Have the baby. Absolutely. 